at that time he made it clear that he, I had a place if I wanted to in the DAP. I come from the Generasi Reformasi, eh? um, where Reformasi was the political awakening. So at that time, of course, you can't run away from the political developments, you know, especially if you're in the Malay family. I think uh, at that time, you know, it was uh, a lot of times families were divided on whether you support Anwar or not. Um, and of course, you go to school, you know, it was everything that people talked about because you can't run away from it. So that political awakening uh, at that time, I think, um, ignited something in me. In terms of law, in terms of public interest, I've always been involved. Uh, but there's always this nagging feeling that, to me personally, um, bar councils reach and um, uh, what do you call that, capacity to affect widespread change is quite limited. That's not to say that Bar Council doesn't play an important role, but it's quite limited. So I've always um, had that feeling that, you know, in order to really affect positive change, um, someone like me would probably need to join a political party. Um, and then, of course, you had the 1MBB scandal. And also, more importantly, the uh, sedition and the CMA dragnet that happened where, you know, um, uh, activist lawyers had to actually go to court, go to police stations all the time because of, you know, the closing in of the democratic spaces. So I realised that something more needs to be done. Uh, and once the election season in 2018 came about, uh, I was approached uh, by some people in the DAP uh, and I must actually mention this, Tony Pua actually uh, approached me and at that time he made it clear that he, I had a place if I wanted to in the DAP. Uh, so then I spoke to some friends um, and, uh, who are in the DAP and I made the decision a month before general elections to join the DAP to help uh, the DAP in, in try and also Pakatan Harapan to, to win Trajaya because I felt that that was the only way for um, uh, uh, there to be long-lasting and you know, meaningful change in the country. In terms of Bangi, I think it's a very diverse place. Um, still very, uh, most of it is very urban, uh, but uh, you know, you've got a good mix uh, of um, people. And in fact, you know, it's um, almost reflective of uh, Malaysia in a sense, right? About, What's the uh, numbers? I think the at, at this point in time, it's about 52% Malay, 38% uh, Chinese, and uh, about uh, 11, 12, the rest percent. Indian. Yeah. So almost similar. Of course, maybe now in Malaysia there's a bit more Malays, but in, in terms of in terms of that, it's a mix scene, um, and also um, there's diversity lah. I mean, um, the you know you've got Bandar Baru Bagi, which is different makeup than Balakong, for example, uh, which is also different from Kajang. So all, at, at the same time, uh, a lot of the issues uh, which uh, concerns um, urbanization cuts across as well, you know, issues such as traffic, yep. issues such as public transportation, uh, issues, national issues such as uh, uh, cost, of cost of living, uh, for young people, employment, for example, uh, wages, all these cuts across. So there are similarities, but there's also, of course, certain differences.